and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys and probably this match review right here it is the most downbeat one of the season by a mile because honestly tonight we were well and truly outplayed by Real Sociedad. Now we're also going to talk about the unbelievable refereeing decision that was made but in general here it was a really poor, really, really bad performance from Barca. And we didn't quite see this coming, I've got to be honest. We were coming into this game, you know, looking good, on good form, you know, feeling very good as well. But just nothing happened for us. Absolutely nothing went right tonight. And also tonight, guys, we're going to be talking about the injury to La Mina Mal. From bad to worse, really. All of that is coming up. So... Let's do this. Because in terms of Hansi Flick's starting lineup in this game, guys, there were a few big decisions for him as we spoke beforehand coming into it. The first one was at centre back there, where Pau Kubasi, even though he had to play with that protective mask on, he did end up playing and playing through the pain there at centre back. In midfield, then we saw actually four different players. Because, like I say, Yamal was not included in this game. We were without him, and believe me, it showed. It was Fermin Lopez there on the right hand side. Pedro in that more advanced role, Frankie de Jong there alongside Casado in midfield. So again, we saw Frankie start again following on from Wednesday with Rafinha and Lewandowski there making up that attacking line. But I think already there, when you're looking at the system, especially the way we started the game and indeed the way that it continued right throughout, really, I think we set the tone early on and it wasn't really that great because obviously with the system, you've got Rafinha who comes inside. We've seen that all season long and we've seen it work to very, very good effect as well. But then you've got Pedro also very, very close, very central here behind Robert Lewandowski. And again, I think there's question marks as to whether is this the best place to play Pedri in this team right now? Is this where he can be most effective? Because of course, the start of the season, and for much of it, we've seen him more withdrawn. We've seen him play some absolutely beautiful football alongside Marc Casado here, really making sure that we can get that ball through the field and supply our attackers. So is this here the best place to play him? And then Fermin Lopez as a winger, and especially as well as a right winger, I just don't think that really worked at all. What we had here against Real Sociedad was a very, very narrow, approach and it didn't work out today so should I were able to get on the ball they were able to put real pressure on us and to be honest here the fullbacks had a tough game today. I think both going forward and defensively as well. The fullbacks were under real, real pressure. They were not allowed to breathe by Real Sociedad. And that was the thing about this game. It all turned around. Usually it's us applying the pressure. Usually here it's us putting teams really, really under the microscope. Today it happened to us. And we were not able to respond. However, guys, even despite all of that, and even despite everything we're going to go on to talk about here regarding Barca's poor performance, what we cannot fail to do is mention the elephant in the room because on 13 minutes 13 unlucky for some it was unlucky for us because what on earth happened here what on earth has gone on in the VAR room and with the referee here tonight at Real Sociedad it's a joke this decision is absolutely diabolical here because Robert Lewandowski thinks he's put Barca ahead and he does and it should have stood because just look at what we're seeing. Just look at what was actually drawn up here and shown to us to explain why this goal was offside. Look at what has been circled. Look at what has been highlighted there. That is not Robert Lewandowski. They have actually highlighted and said, look, it's this that's offside. That is the defender's foot. That is showing, in fact, the defender is playing Lewandowski onside. They have shown his foot as the one that is off. Therefore, he is on. And it is crystal clear. And honestly, guys, can somebody explain to me why do we have VAR then? What is actually the point in having VAR if this can happen? If in the VAR room, they have literally drawn this up. They've looked at these images. They have looked at it. And there's several of them in there. It's not just one person who can make a mistake. They're all sat around screens. They've got every single angle of it. How have they come up with this? How have they looked at that and come to this conclusion? It's a joke. And honestly, guys, it really is. Because yes, Barca take the lead there. And obviously, in the end, it's disallowed. We go on to lose the game. But in that one moment, the whole game can change. You know, if we go 1-0 up in this game, 
it could all look very different, even though maybe the system wasn't that great today. We didn't play well at all. But if we went 1-0, you heard the stadium. Once we scored, it was completely flat, completely different than what it was the whole game. Real Sociedad, they've been devoid of confidence. They have been on a really difficult sort of run this season, not able to string together results. They're really flat. That first goal, it could have completely nullified them. It could have killed their hopes, killed their spirits, but instead... Oh no, La Liga, they'd love to make sure Barca stay down. Barca can't run away with this league. Barca can't get ahead of themselves here. Disallowed goal, and it's unacceptable. However, guys, I am also fair enough to say there was plenty of time for Barca to respond to that there. There was plenty of time to actually say, OK, let's reset. Let's get ourselves back in the game. And let's make sure here that we keep on the same path. But we were just nowhere near today. And that is why when Real Sociedad actually scored there in that first half, it was kind of no surprise. You know, they were growing in the game. They were putting pressure on us. The defence looked a bit shaky, I've got to say, today. They were getting in behind constantly because there was no pressing. There was literally today from Barca, no pressing from anybody. I mean, everybody looked so, so flat there. No energy at all in this team. And even in that first half there, it was interesting to see Frankie de Jong, I think he was struggling. I think there on 25 minutes, he got sort of hit. He went down. He went off the field. He actually got some treatment. I thought maybe he was going to go straight off there with an injury, but he actually came back on. And I think he sort of struggled through the rest of that half. I'm surprised that he actually made it till halftime, that Flick maybe didn't make a change before that because the midfield, it was nowhere. It was going absolutely nowhere there, especially towards the end of the half. Real Sociedad could have easily put the game to bed. They had a really big chance right in front of goal. Mikel Oyazabal with a massive opportunity. He puts that wide. It could have been 2-0. It could have even been game over. And then half time, I think we actually saw Hansi Flick lose his cool a bit. And I think this is very, very rare to see from him, something we haven't seen all season long. But he actually came back out. He was furious with the referee there. He was speaking to him. He was actually, you know, having quite a big conversation with him. He had to be sort of held back by his assistant. He really, really wasn't happy. And you know what? That referee, he started laughing. And this is the arrogance of these people, by the way. They don't even believe they made an error. Or if they do, they're very happy with it. They're very content with their night's work tonight. And that is the thing that really irks me here about these refereeing decisions. They want to be the star of the show. They want to be the big man to make these kinds of calls. And Flick, he was absolutely furious. But I'm also sure, guys, that he was angry with his team. I have absolutely no doubt out here tonight that he is completely and utterly fuming with his players. Because honestly, we just didn't really do anything in this game. Although came on at halftime, and I think he was the one player in that second half. If anybody was going to do anything, it was going to be Danny Olmo. I didn't think Rafinha had a particularly good game today. Neither did most of the players, though, by the way. But Olmo was the one who was trying at least to make something happen. He could have provided there a moment of magic that we needed. But the kind of feeling that I got all the way through that second half, we started to see crosses coming, you know, lots of crosses. I never, ever like to see that as a Barcelona fan, you know, when we start spamming crosses, you can go home now. Because it kind of felt as though it wouldn't matter how long we stayed there, how many games of this we played, we were not going to score. It was not our night tonight. We were not there. We were not ready. And like I say, this is the first time that we've come out second best. You know, you look at the game against Monaco in the Champions League, we were down a man. There was nothing that we could do. You look at the game against Osasuna, we rotated heavily, they won against us on that day. But this was a game here whereby we came up against a team in Real Sociedad who were brilliant. You've got to give them credit. They played an absolutely fantastic game. And ultimately... They wanted it more. And I think that is going to be Flick's major takeaway here from this game. He will be fuming because that can't happen. In this system here, with the high line, with the way that we want to play in every single game, you can't have an off day. You can't just turn up and not be ready to apply yourselves. Ready here to run and press and hunt down the ball and make sure that you are the ones in control. You are the ones on top. It cannot happen. A game like tonight. Because otherwise, it completely falls apart. And I've got to say, they had chances, Real Sociedad, to make it more and more and more goals. And in the end, 1-0. Maybe not even a true representation of the game that we saw right there. So Barca here losing for the second time in La Liga. It is incredibly disappointing. It really does hurt, especially before an international break. But we are six points clear still at the top of the league table. We're doing very well in the Champions League. So obviously right now, guys, it's a bad game. It is a bad performance. There's no escaping that, no hiding from that at all. But I do just hope here 
that we can still have that perspective. What we're going to do in the aftermath of this game, we're going to talk about how Barca improved, what we did wrong, what we must correct, what we must do better, but at the same time, still keeping in our mind... This is a good team. You know, we have been doing some very, very good things this season. We've been putting in some excellent performances. And I've got no doubt here, we can bounce back. And we will bounce back. But this is a game that we have to learn from. We have to take on board. We have to look at the lessons here that we can learn from it. Because it really wasn't good. It wasn't just a loss here that we can say, oh, well, we've lost the game. Could have happened to anyone. You know, it was a mixed game. Could have gone either way. No, I think we have to say... Real Sociedad were better, and they wanted it more, and they were more energetic tonight, they were more intense in their play, and we were second best, and to say that, it's not a good thing, it is not something that Hansi Flick will take lightly at all, but we've got to keep that perspective, and of course bearing in mind, we were missing... La Mina Mal. Now, if anyone, even at 17 years old there, Yamal, doubted his importance in this team and the amount of influence he has on it, well, look at this in La Liga. Two games that we've lost against Osasuna and tonight against Real Sociedad, they were the two games that he didn't start. That's how important he is. That is how good he is in this team. And obviously, it's not ideal that we're heavily reliant on a 17-year-old. But that is the way that he is. That is how talented this young man happens to be. But of course, on Saturday, guys, he did not train with the first team. He only worked out in the gym. That was a big, big concern there. Hansi Flick was quite worried about that in his press conference. Then we heard before the game, well, he's not going to be starting. He's not going to be in the starting lineup. Barca don't want to sort of push him out here. They're going to be very, very careful with him. But then, of course, the team sheet came out and the bench... He wasn't in either. He was actually in the stands tonight. He was nowhere near at all in this game. And the problem was, he suffered an overload there. Barca confirmed in a statement before the game that he had a right ankle contusion in last Wednesday's game against Red Star Belgrade. Barca say that over the past few days, he's undergone treatment there. They've been trying to work on him ahead of this game, but he still has discomfort. They were hoping that it would have gone away by now, but it hasn't, and his recovery will determine his availability. And before the game flipped, did admit... They tried until the end here, hoping that Yamal was going to be ready. You know, they waited even until this morning. They wanted to see how he felt, how he was feeling, if he could be involved in this game in any capacity. But he couldn't. And in the end, he had to be left out of the team. And Flick saying there that we trust in Fermin to replace him. But ultimately, guys, it just wasn't a change, really, that worked out. It wasn't a like-for-like -like change. It wasn't a winger for a winger. We played Fermin there out of position, and it didn't work at all. And the feeling now with Yamal is that Barca do not want him to go on international duty. Of course, they're actually going to send all of their medical reports to Spain. They want to convince them, basically, look, Yamal, he's not feeling right. He's not ready to play. He needs two weeks of rest here to recover and then the hope is that he will be fine following that international break of course we've got very very big games to come we want to be counting on him as soon as we possibly can but we are waiting for more information on exactly when Yamal is expected to return but like I say Barca do not want him joining up with Spain that is a decision that will be made imminently but honestly guys tonight what are your thoughts and feelings on the game, on the performance that we saw? In your opinion, who did not play well? And there is probably quite a long list on that one. But okay, then, who did play okay? You know, who was actually in this team tonight who you thought, okay, they might make something happen? Their performance wasn't so bad. And in terms of the system, in terms of Hansi Flick as well, what are your takeaways here heading into the international break? We will be talking lots more about it, of course. But I'm just very sad. I'm very sad I am tonight. I'm really sorry, actually, that we've ended in this way before the break, guys. But don't worry, we will bounce back. Barca have been excellent this season. They've been so, so good and so impressive that I trust in them to hit back and do it in the only way we know how. Bouncing back with lots and lots of goals. But there's lots to correct in that time. And we'll be talking more about that, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you indeed, though, for all of your support. But until next time here, as always, Vishka, Yelbasa. Uh -huh.